One of the common things that I get asked a lot on my messages, whether it's on Instagram or TikTok, and a lot of the times I get emails, is how to improve your math skills. And I think that's a very important question to ask because a lot of people and students do typically get lost and try to just, you know, find some shortcut to, to improve those math skills. But to be honest, I mean, I think it starts from the very beginning. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. So this video is gonna be a little different than the ones I typically make. Um, I'm not gonna do integrals, I'm not gonna solve any math problems, I'm just gonna give you a list and some advice as to what I think uh, you will need so that you can you know, su successfully be better at math. So uh, let's get to it. So the very first thing that I would even say is to practice your algebra. There's been, I mean, I've been tutoring, I would say, for the past, gosh, 12 years or more than that? No. Oh my gosh, almost 15 years. And a lot of the times, the students that I see that are the most successful in areas like mathematics is those that are typically really good at their algebra. And it starts in the very beginning. So, you know, if you're if you know someone that's in 6th, 7th, or even think back of the times you were in 6th or 7th grade, the algebra was really important. And uh, a lot of the times, especially in calculus, you will notice, maybe it's not you, but you notice people in your math class that actually struggle with basic things like fractions or, you know, solving for the value of X, two-step equations, which sounds silly, but honestly, just something that a lot of people definitely need to, uh, to continue to work on. So things like fractions, like I mentioned, um, like radical equations, exponents, properties of exponents. For some reason, when it comes to that, people just get lost uh, in the sauce, if you will. Um, I remember when I was in middle school, my dad will always tell me to practice your algebra, organize your thoughts, show all your work. So I think that was really... Um, that effort was instilled in me and I, I owe that to him uh, for that. Um, when it comes to that, you know, something like polynomial functions, I think that's basically like algebra and algebra two. For some reason, you know, we see polynomial functions, especially quadratic equations, and you know, they hammer that down uh, a lot, very heavily when in algebra two, obviously, uh, but we kind of just forget about it. We think, okay, I'm never gonna see a quadratic equation again. For whatever reason, that's what we might think. Um, but a lot of people forget the basics of a polynomial function, you know, the parent functions of a square root function, of a cube root, of a cubic function, how that looks. And then, of course, you know, graphing um, a function based off their zeros and their multiplicities and then talking about end behavior. So I think, you know, studying that is... Um, is extremely important. And to be honest, I, I would even suggest as I'm going through this, look, go back at least and think about, okay, I'm struggling with, you know, graphing or transforming polynomial functions. Work on that. So go back to like an algebra two textbook if you can find it or an algebra textbook, um, or even just go online and practice those things. But I think at the, you know, at the very end, it comes down to, do you know these basic skills so that this can be used later on in higher level math. Um, and that comes kind of like with the next one, trig. Most importantly, the unit circle. I know a lot of people say you don't need to memorize it, uh, memorize it, and you really don't, but I always highly recommend that you do. Um, I think you should memorize the trig, uh, the unit circle, memorize it however you want. I actually remember when I took, actually I skipped pre-calculus, I had to like do that on my own, but when it came down to like calculus, I had a whiteboard in my class or at home, and I will literally just write the unit circle down with all the coordinates and all the radians um, over and over again to the point where it was almost muscle memory for me. Um, I wouldn't recommend that as much because now, for example, when I'm trying to find like, I don't know, five pi over six, I have to go back and like literally imagine, okay, five pi over six is going to be in the second quadrant. And I kind of like do a pi over six as 30 degrees. And in my head, I count that five times. It's not as uh, efficient, but for me, I have it memorized. And that's something like unit circle, something that you should definitely just have that on the back of um, your back pocket because it's going to be used so many times. And you know, with trig functions, I think it's important that you know the basic identities like the Pythagorean identities, the sum and difference formulas, because you know, if you happen to take higher level, you know, calculus, calc two, more advanced, um, those are things that you're definitely gonna have to know. 
So something that I would highly recommend is to practice those uh, trig functions. And of course, the graphs of sines, cosines, and tangents, uh, one of those things, again, that we, a lot of students just kind of cover once and then just forget about it. But I still think it's important for you to know, you know, uh, how the, the period changes for the sine and cosine and um, how the amplitude and where would the midline be? I think those are important things. And it, it kind of, it, it's funny now that I'm, you know, doing like four year series or I'm, you know, studying those things. It's really helpful for me to visualize these sines and cosine graphs because that's actually where it's essential. So knowing how the sine and cosine and tangent graphs look is uh, very important. So something I would suggest that you you freshen up, or if you're taking that now, great. If not, go back and try to review those concepts. Because um, after that comes calculus. And to be honest, I always tell students that calculus is everything that you learned in, um, in high school and some middle school put together, and now we're just gonna do a bunch of things and try to imagine graphs and try to predict how functions, um, how faster, um, the facets increasing or how it's bending. And that's what calculus is. You know, it's everything that we've learned so far. We're just adding some derivatives. And then of course, when it comes to the integrals, that is like a, gosh, it's a, it's, it's a new field or like a niche that a lot of people truly enjoy solving integrals. I mean, as you know, that's kind of like what I love doing. Uh, it's, it's really fun. And of course, the only way you can truly get better at it is if your algebra is top notch, you know how basic polynomial functions work. And of course, you know, you have some trig identities because we see a lot of the things in calculus. And as you know, four year series, I mean, so many application problems in real life involve calculus. And if you are not strong in these areas before, then calculus can be a little difficult. Um, and you know, after that comes, I don't know why I even wrote these things, but I talked about like linear algebra and ODEs. Uh, again, things that if you're not proficient in this, you're going to struggle in that. Um, should you know linear algebras and ODEs? Uh, it all depends on like what you're trying to study. Uh, I think it's a, another field of math that you should definitely um, know, along with things like analysis. You know, with analysis, you're you're proving stuff, and uh, it leads to classes like group theory and ring theory, which are extremely fun. And of course, it's for the higher level math students, those that actually want to major in math. So the analysis part, you know, teaches you how to prove things and prove theorems. And if I think it's a really difficult class, to be honest, I remember when I took this class back in college and I don't think I got a single problem right. And that's OK, because the analysis part just kind of teaches you, you know, it helps you practice these skills. And even if you can't prove anything, that's I will say that's fine because it's going to lead you to the next course where you're going to continue to strengthen those skills. But, you know, knowing analysis is extremely helpful, especially if you want to become, uh, you know, a pure mathematician. So that's basically what I have on the list. And the last thing that I always like to tell students is to practice. You know, a lot of the times we just read our homework or do complete our homework and we think we're done with the assignment, but the practicing part is what actually makes you so much better. And that's really, that's kind of where I come in. You know, I practice a lot of these problems uh, on TikTok or Instagram and then here on YouTube as well. And this is how we improve. And to be honest, I'm still learning along the way. And there's a lot of things that I look uh, forward to, that I look forward to practicing. And I know things that I, I need to um, continue to practice. And that's, you know, for example, I really want to improve my ODEs. I... Um, I watch a lot of other YouTube creators that are solving some really intricate integrals. And I think that's, to me, extremely exciting. So I want to continue practicing that. But if you want to continue and be better at math or increase and strengthen those skills, you got to put in the practice, okay? You got to put in the work. It doesn't happen overnight, but you start seeing those changes and you start noticing how well or how much better you actually do get when you practice. So whether you're in middle school, high school, or even college, or maybe you've graduated and you just want to continue, you know, solving math problems because it's actually that fun, then you got to practice. Okay. So the homework is not enough. Sometimes you got to do extra work from whether it's your teacher, your tutor, or you're just literally looking stuff up online. Or if you're watching videos like mine, pull up a piece of paper and just practice those things because at the end, they're definitely going to make a difference. So that's kind of all I have for today. But again, if you feel like 
I mean, is there other um, topics or other suggestions from people that are math majors, from people that are, you know, have found success in their improving their math skills? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will love to hear from you guys because we want to continue building this math community. We have, we should have no shame and we should be open about our struggles because that's what makes us uh, a better community, I would say. And as you already know, my Instagram and TikTok is a little different than my YouTube. I'm hoping that you agree with that. And if you don't, that's fine because I'm always looking for suggestions. What kind of videos do you want to see here on YouTube? And now we have the long form and we can do obviously more long form style uh, problems where I'm not, you know, fast forwarding things or there's no cuts. I can literally just solve a problem. And if it takes 10, 15 or 20 minutes and that's fine. But also things like this, you know, some suggestions or some um, uh, advice if you want to hear that or maybe not. Who... It, that, that's totally fine as well. But if you feel like you have an idea of the types of things you want to see on this channel, let me know and continue to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. And I'm super, super, so grateful for the support here and so grateful to be part of this community and looking forward to posting more videos on here. Take it easy.